Welcome to the Simple Success Podcast, where you've landed well in your search for financial life coaching from a happiness perspective. We'll be coming at you on a regular basis with podcasts, webinars, and masterclasses, together aimed at freeing you from the change that the financial industry puts on all of us. Most of us don't even know what those chains are, and if I've learned anything in life, it's to not waste time trying to solve problems people don't even know they have. Let's go up to the common ground here. We can overcome, and we will do so. Join me for the ride of your life in a good way. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Do your own research. Consult a professional investment advisor before making any investment decisions. This show is for entertainment only. Faites vos propres recherches. This looks like a good table for our cat. Do you like it? Oh yeah, this will be fine, Daniel. This is actually a pretty good public place to get this started, and I'm confident that this will be enlightening for all of our listeners as well. So let's get right into it. Who are you, Kian Ares 2? Well, I can't think of a better way to start the interview. I'm John. I am the host of a couple of podcasts that you're going to get to know if you don't already know them. What is this thing? This thing is simple success and really good voice acting. Wait, what? It's two things? Yeah, it's two things. Uh At least, maybe more. It's at least two podcasts. Tell me about them. And... It is habit stacking and goal focusing, as we'll talk about more. What's habit stacking? When I say habit stacking, what I mean is taking one good idea and later on adding another good idea on top of the same one so that it's not taking up more time. It's like the old idea of getting two things with a single effort. And that's what habit stacking is. Two good ideas combined are far easier to achieve and more likely to make you feel like you're making good progress that you are proud of. Okay, and that's the Simple Success Podcast, right? Right. Right, that's the Simple Success Podcast. And the other one? A Choice Voice. A Choice Voice, like I just said. A Choice Voice. And why did you call it that? Because it rhymes, partly. The domain was available, and that, of course, helps but mostly because it allows the receiver, the user, to know that we are respectful of the fact that they have many choices and they've chosen this voice because this voice resonates with them and their goals. How long have you been doing this? So I've been doing this for two years. All of 2021 actually started in February, but back-timed and had enough episodes to say there was 52 episodes for the year, one weekly. And that's for both of them, both A Choice Voice and Simple Success. Simple Success comes out on Mondays at 3 a.m. Pacific Time. And A Choice Voice comes out on Wednesdays at 3 a.m. Pacific Time. Really? Yep. And that's on purpose so that they hit at 6 a.m. Eastern Time and get pretty much everybody's drive time. So it's completely full for 2022. And I'm already recording guests continuing to evolve for 2023. Why so much language stuff? Why so much language stuff? The reason for so much of that is because I love learning and I love inclusion, bringing people together and observing the patterns. Those are big too. Observing patterns I find very rewarding And I can do that. I've always been able to do that in financial terms. And I find a similar part of the brain, part of my brain anyway, tickled by seeing patterns in words. Why the emphasis on AI voices? The emphasis on AI voices? Well, you wouldn't be here if there wasn't an emphasis on AI voices. But Uh that said, I like it because it allows me to use my imagination to bring other characters into the story where it's appropriate, where it will add some humor or in some other way benefit the listeners. So that's why I do it. Who is this DT character? Doubting Thomas? Well, that's an interesting question. This is from a parable, actually, the parable of Doubting Thomas. And it points to one of the original 12 disciples. Really? But I'm not getting into the religious aspect of it there. The Doubting Thomas parable refers to anyone who is unconvinced of the merit of some endeavor. 
perhaps willing to do it, but not yet convinced. And that's what we're working on. That's what this character provides, a healthy skepticism to the ideas, but ultimately being willing to accept them and try them out, like everyone should. So it's not the religion per se. We'll get into that later. What's the most interesting thing about yourself as far as you know? <laughs> the most interesting thing about myself as far as I know? I continue to learn. And I continue to believe in simplicity and positive attitude, regardless of what I see around me from time to time or in certain people. Uh -huh. I focus on what's good and what could be gained. What about your background? My background is pretty varied. I started off as a recording engineer, working for a televangelist and then a private recording studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for a few years. And I've always loved doing that. But even though it was so much fun, it didn't pay the bills like I wanted to. I then, because of that, spent four years active duty in the Air Force and then 12 years or eight years civil service, total 12 years before moving out to Washington State. And there I worked for Microsoft. And I also was a financial advisor for a major company that you would recognize. And then I started the transition into doing this independently. Uh -huh. Why podcasting? The why podcasting? Because it resonates with me. It ties back the financial knowledge and the voice acting that I do with the engineering and recording that I used to do. So it comes full circle. That's why. Where did your ideas come from? My ideas? They come from a lot of sources. I listen to other podcasts to hear what people are thinking and talking about. I listen to different audiobooks on various topics, many of them forward-thinking and, and open-minded. And I pay attention to things that I see going on, just like anybody else, but with a heightened intensity. How many different ideas do you have? I don't know how many different ideas I have. I have lots of ideas, and I have settled on a couple of ways of organizing them to simplify that and learned how to forgive myself if I don't get them all done on exactly the time frame that I was thinking. I know I have the idea recorded, and I will get to it if it remains important. How many different ideas do I have about this? Yes, about this. What's the underlying reason for what you're doing here? The underlying reason for what I'm doing here is to bring the learning that I have simplified and make it easy to understand and act upon and to bring that to you. That's my underlying reason. How do people give you feedback? Basically, whatever way is comfortable to them, of course. Now, I highly encourage the use of Reddit, certainly not because they sponsor this. Because they don't do that yet. But because it's a nice central place to give constructive criticism and feedback and make requests for future episodes. So links to that are in the show notes. What's life coaching? Besides not knowing what else to say about yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, that's one way to look at it. Life coaching is having accountability for what design that you've already agreed on with a customer. So life coaching is really follow on from life design. You have to be a life designer first. What's life designing? Life designing is painting a picture and painting it in such a way that it's very clear what goal you are meeting and why you're doing it. So you and I, for example, if we have a life design, we agree on how things are going to go, what goal we're going to try to meet, and then how we're going to meet it. That's the design. The coaching, the life coaching, is following up taking the steps and acting on the steps to make sure that they actually do happen. So for that reason, I think that the best life coach that anybody could ever have is also their life designer and their life designer first. What's sound designing? What's sound designing? That's a bit different from life designing. It's post-production of audio. Like if I were to bring in a sound effect right here, or if I were to bring in some background music, bring it in, bring it up, fade it out, that sort of thing. Putting in audio cues, whether it's a different type of a voice, a character voice like I do in Simple Success, or bringing in the applause like I do in a choice voice. 
That's what sound designing is about. It's almost always, doesn't have to be after the fact, but it almost always is. Do you do audiobooks? Yes, I do do audiobooks. That's a big part of the voice acting. And one of the things that people can take away from when they're listening to a choice voice, those are great speeches written by other people. And audiobooks are great works of fiction or nonfiction. Really? Also written by other people. So I love that because I get to bring in my own personality into that. And when the personality that I bring matches up with what the audiobook customer wants, then we have a great synergy going on and a great matchup. And that always works out. Do you do written books? Written books? I do some of those. I have written five ebooks and have plans to add on to podcasting in 2023 at least one hardback book. Any videos I can download? Videos? That's also a 2023 plan. I would really love to do that. I know a lot of podcasts are leaning into videocasts, some permanently and some occasionally. So I am exploring that because I like the idea. It's a bit more work, but we can get there. That's a goal, and that's how goals work. How does a choice voice support simple success? That's a good question. It gives me and the audience another way to listen to the voice that they might be working with. Whether it's from a financial perspective like simple success does or simply a voice acting and personality focused presentation like you will find in a choice voice. Do you have advertising? I do have a tiny bit of advertising. It's almost exclusively for a simple success, choice voice, Little Red Hen Industries. There may be some external ads coming in the future. We'll see how that goes. But they will be in service of the customer and the purpose, not just ads for ads' sake. What's the business model and what does this all cost? From a pricing perspective, it's pretty reasonable. Give us an example. As a active financial advisor, I could not do any transaction for anybody, no matter how small, without charging a minimum of $50, which with a very small trade made it not cost effective. That's not something that I want to get into, nor do I get into. Right now, a subscription to everything that we do here at Little Red End Industries is uh-huh. $100 per year. And that is access to all of the podcasts, access to Q&As, a complimentary phone call, perhaps, group chats, exclusive pre-order access to written materials. It goes on. Value, unparalleled value, is what I wish to bring. Do you have guests? Yes, we do have guests. Hello, Jackson. This has evolved, though, quite a bit. If you were to go back and listen to all of the old podcasts, I'm not actually asking you to do that, but... As AI, I could do that in about five seconds. Yeah, I bet you could, Matthew, as long as you're trained on the proper information. All of them way back to the beginning of 2021, episode one, you would hear an evolution from a single voice to character voices and some additional prompts that go to artificial intelligence voices oops excuse me and now you hear more standard intros and outros and a bit of a change to the music how it's executed so you hear this evolution one of the primary changes that i've gotten from listening to other podcasts is to include guests i was using act two to create examples for people and the most recent evolution involves going to an expert to do most of those examples, if not all of them. Our plan for 2023 is to have a guest at least once a month. That may evolve to twice a month throughout the year. That's as yet unclear, but once a month at least. So yes, we do have guests. Do you do interviews? And yes, interviews. The best discussion and value that we can provide for people in the guest section is to interview the guest properly. And that 
helps the guests shine as well. Do you have a religion? Do I have a religion? That's an interesting question. I have faith. I want to make sure that everybody listening realizes that my position, at least, is the same as Napoleon Hill's. Really? Everyone out there is my brother. They may have different brands, his word, but that's okay because we all can learn. And remember, learning is very, very, very important. And one of the things that I've learned is that all really good and wise ideas can be found in multiple places because they are universal human ideas and different humans have created different versions of the same idea. So it's all fine. I don't have a particular religion. I have a faith. How does faith play a part without religion? It plays a part because it plays right into what I believe, that I can learn and others can learn if we focus on the faith part uh -huh. and not the fear part. Anything that happens to you happens because of your fear of it or because of your faith in it, one way or the other. Everything, anything, must come from fear or from faith. Break it down to that level and keep it that simple. You'll find yourself able to go a long way. Is leaving a legacy important? Leaving a legacy is important to me, and I think to a lot of people. I want what I do to change somebody's life, to be meaningful. I know I've done that already, but I'm not done. Does a financial background help? A financial background helps, of course, but it's not required. One of the things I learned in my years at Microsoft was how to translate difficult ideas to common ideas. And that is one of the underlying rationales behind simple success, translating difficult financial ideas into ideas that anybody can learn and take advantage of. Perhaps at a smaller scale, but that's fine because they're still taking advantage of it. And actually, while we get into that, the details of how being small can actually be better than being big sometimes, we'll get into that in more detail one-on-one -on -one or in a group chat or something like that. Distill things down to a simple level where it can be used by everybody, by all of us, anytime. So having a financial background isn't absolutely necessary. It, it helps, but it's not absolutely necessary. What is necessary is to recognize and be realistic about how long things take uh -huh. so that you can back time them and reach your goals when you want to reach your goals. It's a lot like project planning. Why is project planning so important? Well, project planning is important, for example, in putting out these podcasts, knowing when you're going to do something and why you're going to do something, especially if other people are involved in the manufacture or production, and you want to have everybody on track and doing things. That's actually one of the hardest jobs that anybody can have. Yeah. Just ask Andrew Carnegie about that. Bringing people together and having them work in harmony together toward a common goal. That really is a lot harder than it might seem or look. You just have to be really, really specific about what you want to achieve. Why should you be specific? What do I mean about being specific? Uh-huh. I mean, whatever you think is an important thing for you to do, be very detailed about it. If you're going to choose a place to live, a person to be with, or any other kind of goal to reach, be very detailed about it so that you don't regret it later because you weren't specific enough. For example, all my life I thought it would be great to live in a certain place, but as yet I have not been specific enough so I can be living in a physical paradise that has a mental drawback of some sort, and that is less than ideal. So in order to be ideal, be specific, and you won't regret it later. What's your favorite book? My favorite book? Well, that's an easy one, Think and Grow Rich. I talk about it all the time in Simple Success, trying to be subtle, but sometimes not so subtle. But that's my favorite book. I've read the book, I don't know, a hundred times. And I continue to listen to it over and over with the attempt of memorizing each chapter to the degree 
that I can say what's in the book, what's not in the book, how it relates to a certain thing. Like just last year, the July 4th episode, which is a big deal in the United States as the U.S. Independence Day, I was able to tie some Think and Grow Rich material directly to that. Whereas for most people, it's not immediately obvious. I've read it enough times that I know that all we need to do is extract some important details out of chapter eight of that book. And we've got our Independence Day tie-in. I think that's a pretty good example. If you could invite anyone to dinner, who would it be? If I could invite anyone to dinner, who would it be? (sighs) A great writer, a great intellect, and a person with a wonderful sense of humor. That could fit a number of different people, so I won't name one specific one. Not even Hemingway. No, not even Hemingway or any of the other great authors that are out there. What do you do when stressed? Breathe. Breathe? Yeah, breathe. It's a learned thing. It's prescribed all the time, and people will even roll their eyes at it. And I did it for years without realizing how good it can be. But by continuing to practice and repeat... Which is how you've all gotten good. Yes, yes, yes. Just like I say all the time in Simple Success, by practicing it and repeating it, I have really, really, really begun to unlock its value. How do you keep calm about deadlines? The same way. I keep calm about deadlines in the same way I keep calm about literally anything else. I've assigned tasks to a particular day in the future using a daily tickler file, which helps me get past deadlines. But I mostly just shrug them off having practiced and learned what's okay to do that with. He's not really claiming that. I've learned not to get all worked up about everything because many externally imposed deadlines are for the convenience of other people and don't affect me anywhere near as much as they would if I let them. Why should you improve and what's needed to do it? Why should I improve? Because I want to be better than I was many, many years ago. I've got a whole episode about being 1% better every day and what that means. It's a well-proven mathematical formula that 1% better every single day for 365 days or a year makes you 37 times better at the end of the year. That's why you should improve, because just a little tiny bit, not a big deal, not a zero to 60 moment. You don't have to do like I used to do 5,000 steps a day, and that was a lot, and now I do 12,000 steps a day, and that's a ton. That's about six miles, approximately, depending on stride length. Uh Uh-huh. But it's patient, long-term improvement. That's why you improve. What is all this stuff about patience and practicing? It's about adjusting your expectations so that you don't feel like you have to have results tomorrow. I remember a story I read a few years ago about a person who was planning to travel to Italy and was complaining because they were on a well-known language application on the computer trying to learn Italian And they were frustrated that they were going in two weeks and had been practicing for two weeks and weren't very good yet. Well, gosh, I've been practicing Spanish for most of my life, and I'm not really good yet. Well, actually, I'm a native English speaker, and I've been practicing English all my life, and I'm not great at that. I'm pretty good, but I'm not perfect. So there's still room to improve, and I feel that way about any language. Can you repeat without all the repetition? It's repetitive. Can I repeat without all the repetition? That's funny. That's what it's all about, and you know that. That's really great information, John, and it's been great talking. On behalf of moi, Matthew, and the ever-precise Daniel, thanks for being here and thanks for sharing some of what makes you tick. Well, thank you, Matthew. This was fun. And, of course, thank you, Daniel. And, as Matthew said, everybody else who is to blame for this effort here today, thanks. This was a lot of fun. You are welcome, Donata Durian. Thank you. This podcast and our other podcast are productions of Little Red Hen Industries. The supporting cast who helps me bake the bread includes... Techno King, John C. Brandy, Fact Checker, Abraham Lincoln, Script Consultant, Open AI, Language Consultant, Ever Evolving, Media Expert, Favor Abbasi E.K., Psychologist, William James, 
Rabbit Hole Advisor, Dr. Mark Perrot, Sound Designer, Goodly Amo Marconi, Videographer, Alfred Hitchcock, Inspiration, Many Podcasts and Other Sources and of course Napoleon Hill. We also have websites and you can subscribe to both podcasts and get ebooks and other great stuff. You can send us a video, audio or text message, but of course you'll have to head to the show notes either on your phone or on the web to actually get links and stuff. And those clickable links are in the show notes. And before we forget, the artificial intelligence or AI voices you hear in our work come from Google, Amazon Polly, OpenAI and the online tone generator linked in the show notes. Finally, you can find us on podmatch.com and matchmaker.fm, where we consider guests and guesting on other pods. And really finally, the music for our pods comes from Cute by Ben Sound and from Piano Background by Nick Simon Adams. The sound effects credits go to Jackson Academy Ashmore, Canoe CG, Dr. Jekyll, Joe Payne, Everything Sounds, MK Play More Stories, ERH, Sand Emotions, Big Pickle 51, and Just Kid Inc. Yes, that's his or her name, all on freesound.org.